Hi there, knife people, hello, lady and gentlemen. If you are into knives at all, you know that the knife universe in the last three weeks is a buzz with the Benchmade's new re-release of this original model 710 McHenry and Williams. To celebrate the 25th anniversary, they made 250 of these gold class and 2,500 of these limited edition. The gold class sold out in like a blink of an eye. What makes 710 so important that Benchmade decided to re-release it? First time they ever done it. It's the very first time ever to feature this access lock. Access lock is the original type of crossbar lock that enables you to operate knife single-handed and to close the blade without putting your fingers into the path of the cutting edge. I've watched several videos about this knife and only few reviewers are pointing out the fact that this access log has been completely redesigned. So for 25 years, Benchmade made the original style access lock. So for this model, they chose to redesign the original access lock. And the only feature in common between the two but I want to save it for later. So what was the reason for redesigning the crossbar lock? You see Benchmade has lifetime warranty on all their knives. So when they see a recurring problem, they pay attention because it costs them money. And the problem did exist, at least in some knives. And as you can see, most of them, if not all of them, are breaking in the middle of the arch. There could be several reasons for that. For example, a scratch on the surface of the spring can then propagate into a crack. But the consistency of the location of the break tells me a different story. A story of hardness versus toughness. A spring that is too stiff or too thin for its application will become prone to cracking after so many cycles. And that's what material scientists and engineers call fatigue-induced fracturing. So, can we compare the old and the new design without the use of materials lab? You betcha! First, I'm going to find out what is the spring coefficient for the old and the new spring. Spring coefficient is calculated by dividing the force that you apply to a spring by a distance by which that spring was compressed. I measured the distance that the access lock compresses on the new and the old style knives. And now I'm measuring the force that it takes me to fully compress the spring. It's a tedious process because I'm tabulating five trials for each knife. All three knives that I possess are participating in this experiment. The part of this experiment most prone to error is applying consistent force to fully compress access lock. Taking multiple measurements and then averaging the result helps me to reduce some of that error. Without a doubt, this is the most tedious and nerdiest video I've ever compiled. But honestly, I would rather be doing this than cutting cardboard 680 times. On this channel, I am not trying to sell you knives. But the only way I can get the word out is with your help. Anytime you click a like or share the video with your friends, YouTube shows it to people that think just like you. So, which spring was stiffer? The original Omega spring seen on the top row has a spring coefficient of 73.3. On the bottom, the two new knives is 67 and a half. And for the real nerds out there, you can see that it did not convert grams into newtons because the relationship between newtons and grams in this case is linear. Therefore, I can easily determine the percentage of difference in their stiffness. Basically, the original Omega spring is stiffer than the new one. And finally, here they are, side by side. This is the Omega spring, and this is a new flat Omega spring. Some of my viewers asked if they are interchangeable. They are not. The original round cross section Omega spring engages the liner via a 90 degree downturned tab. It engages the crossbar via a hook on the other end. The new 
Omega spring has a rectangular cross section. It engages the liner via a U-shaped tab and it engages the crossbar via a straight tab through a hole, which I'm trying to show you right here. Here's the close-up of the U-shape tab that engages the liner. And this end is what engages the crossbar through the hole that I just showed you. And here it is again. We are not done nerding out on this knife. Next, I want to measure the cross-section area of these two springs. Why is this important? I'll let you know in a couple of minutes. Uh, for now, this spring measures one and 22 hundredths of a millimeter across and 41 hundredths of a millimeter thick. And the traditional Omega Springs cross-section diameter measures at 63 hundredths of a millimeter. As you can see, the old spring has cross-sectional area of uh, 312 thousandths of a millimeter square, and the new one has a cross-section area of 500 thousandths of a millimeter square. Here's what we learned so far. The difference in the areas between the old and new spring is 38%, and the delta or difference in spring coefficients is only 8%. When you look at tables for materials, the data that is collected is on a standardized sample. So for a specific standardized cross-sectional area, these materials that have been tested have certain amount of toughness. Obviously, I don't have samples of these spring materials or the lab to run half a million cycles on the spring. That's why I am forced to make conclusions based on what we've learned today. And what I see here is one spring, the old one, has to do the same amount of work because the blades weigh the same, they're the same thickness. It has to do the same amount of work to detent this blade and let it open in a snappy manner as this spring because this blade weighs the same. So for the same amount of work, a stiffer spring with a higher coefficient, spring coefficient, and smaller cross-sectional area will be less tough, significantly less tough than the spring with a lower coefficient and larger cross-sectional area. Will it translate into improved reliability? Time will tell. For now, I am not done. I figured while these knives are still out, let's talk about a couple things that I think Benchmade got wrong. And to do that, I'm bringing in my second 710 limited edition. It just so happened that I promised to buy uh, a knife to two of my favorite dealers, and I'm a man of my word, so I bought both of them. Anyway, so here's brand new uh, out of the box, I like I like the card they put in. If you're thinking about getting one, I would recommend getting it while you can because it's actually truly limited edition. And uh, here, here's what we got. So, brand new unopened knife right here. So, this one I carried one time already in my pocket and uh, I used it, um, got the blade a little dirty. So things you need to know about this electrically this. deposited uh, bronze phosphate finish. That's what that is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm not 100% uh, certain on that. But what you can see, uh, this one stains easily. It's absorbing oils, and when you wash it, it doesn't come out as even as the new, brand new blade. So I figured if I just run a coat of light oil on it, uh, it will come back to this darker color. But these knives ship with this standard, basically unappealing carryover from base, most basic knives pocket clip. As you can see, it has that stone washed finish that matches neither the blade nor the scales. So again, for $600, Benchmade cheaped out on a 10 cent part. 
or maybe a, a 50 cent part. Everything else is great, cheap pocket clip. So I stole a pocket clip from my uh, Mini Adamas Carbon Fiber Edition because it's a good match to the blade. You know, it brings it a notch up. Let me take that off. By the way, keep all your boxes, folks. You never know when you need uh, to trade your knife for something in a pinch. Uh, having a box and all the materials that come with it is very useful in that regard. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. I hope Benchmade will get the message one of these days. And if you're worried about what happened to the donor mini Adamus, or Adamus, opinions vary on that pronunciation. Here it is. It's a sort of stone-washed stainless steel clip. It's an aftermarket, so probably made in China, but Benchmade doesn't sell them in that guise. And it's pretty well matched to the access lock knobs and to the blade. Here it is in the closed position and to the rest of the hardware, right? So now this knife has just the right amount of bronze coating accents. Right here, right here, right here. And this knife looks more like a limited edition premium piece. Next. If people on the design committee at Benchmade are watching it, we need to talk about the edge. On the bottom is the edge on your $600 limited edition knife that I was just showing. On the top is an edge on run-of-the-mill, unlimited production, Spyderco Manix 2. That is a professionally done edge. Not that you don't know how to do this. Because here is the Gold Class 710 McHenry and Williams that I just got. And it has a beautiful edge. And please don't feed us a line that you cannot do it in a full-scale production environment. Because here's the select edge on Benchmade's very own Hidden Canyon hunting fixed blade. See, when they put their minds to it, they can do it. Now, I am tired to repeat myself and everybody else. Uh, obviously, if you look at this older knife, what is it, uh, uh, 14 years ago or 13 years ago, Benchmade knew that screws other than these cheap, junky T6 screws existed. For example, there, there's evidence that they're aware of existence of countersunk screws. So why in the world can't they switch other than maybe they bought the world's supply of button head screws with a T6 socket? I have no idea why they're sticking to their guns on it. Tell me in the comments, what do you think looks better? Tell me what do you think would work better for the pocket clip? I just want uh, you and Benchmade to have an ability to communicate. I am not publishing these videos to bash Benchmade. I, as they call a Benchmade superfan, this is my collection of discontinued, limited edition, first production, etc. Benchmade knives. And this is not all of it. I have a lot of Benchmades and I love the brand. It's a success story. And I'm very happy that they made improvements to the access lock. But why do you always stop short? Why not bring it a notch up and let Riyadh eat their shorts?